artisans in Japan have cultivated an aesthetic tradition for a thousand years. They print handmade paper with patterns inspired by nature. This is the art of Karakami. Kenkichi Senda is the 11th generation owner of Karacho, the oldest Karakami workshop in Japan. He has kept alive the methods and philosophy that go into Karakami's creation. Karakami's most important features are the patterns and the power they possess. I believe people have created various patterns to symbolize nature. Since time immemorial. Some 650 of Caracho's designs have been carefully preserved. They incorporate nature motifs from Japan's four seasons, and some symbolize ancient concepts about the cosmos or wishing for prosperity. People in Japan have cherished katakami paper and use it for everyday articles like sliding doors and partitions. Subtle changes in the light make the patterns sparkle. Let's explore beauty nurtured for a millennium through the art of katakami. Kyoto. The ancient Japanese capital has a history going back 1,200 years. The Gion Festival is one of the highlights of Kyoto summers. Floats parade through the streets decorated with bright colors and patterns. This design featuring dragons has its origins in China. Another combines geometric patterns from Persia with a floral design from India. These motifs were brought to Japan through Eurasia. During the festival, people pray for happiness and good fortune. at the foot of Mount Hiei in northeastern Kyoto. Stands Karacho's workshop. It was established in 1624, during the Edo period. Artisans here have carried on the craft of making karakami for centuries. At 10 a.m., Karacho's workday begins. Kinkichi begins every morning by looking after all the plants. His wife, Ikuko, prays at the family altar. She asks their ancestors to watch over them so their day will go smoothly. Today, Kenkichi starts working on katakami with a cherry blossom design. A local store placed the order. 
Karacho's methods for making karakami haven't changed for 400 years. First, Kenkichi prepares a white base with powder made from oyster shells. Then he applies it to a piece of handmade washi paper. This base color will accentuate the pattern. Now Kenkichi mixes the color for the flowers. This is the most important step in making katakami. The main ingredient is powdered mica. The Japanese name, kira, describes its luster. Natural pigments containing clay are then added. Only red, blue, and yellow are used to make the entire spectrum of colors. Adding a touch of red to white kira makes the delicate pink of cherry blossoms. Kenkichi uses a small amount so the color won't be too bright. Next, he adds some yellow. This will convey the warm shade of cherry blossoms in the spring. And a tiny amount of blue lends transparency to the petals. Kenkichi relies on instinct developed through years of experience to mix the perfect shades. The small, shiny granules in the pigment are the kira. Their sparkle will make the color stand out and flicker in the light. Now it's time to create the pattern for the katakami with a wood block. Kenkichi applies the pigment with a screen. This simple tool uses a large piece of gauze. It's important to coat the surface evenly with color. Temperature and humidity affect the thickness of the pigment. The sound helps Kenkichi make subtle adjustments. He then places the washi paper on the wood block to bring out the pattern. Kenkichi takes care not to crush the pigment as he gently rubs the paper. Here's the finished sheet of katakami with cherry blossoms in full bloom. The kira on the paper's surface reflect the light, adding luster and the slightest variation in color. The border between the light and the shadow is especially beautiful. What makes that possible is this wonderful paint with kira mixed in. There's the kira's delicate pink on the white background. It's actually not pink, it's not white either. Here in Kyoto, we call this hannari. Hannari refers to a color that contains a hint of a different shade. 
The word expresses a depth that can't be described by individual names for colors. A famous author once said, the sight of it nearly brought her to tears. The art of making katakami began in Japan about a thousand years ago, in the Heian period. The paper came from China to Kyoto, then the capital city. At first, aristocrats used it mainly for writing, but over time, paper printed with motifs such as birds and flowers found other applications. That was the beginning of katakami. In the early Edo period, about 400 years ago, people began to use katakami for sliding doors so they could enjoy its beauty in their homes. Demand for the paper surged. A record from the time shows there were 13 katakami workshops in Kyoto. One of them was Katakami ya Choemon. Karacho is an abbreviation of his name. Treasures from that period have been carefully kept at Karacho. The 650 carved wood blocks are the heart and soul of the Katakami artisan's work. This pattern is called Kuyomon, or a design of nine stars. It probably has its origins in astrology from India, and perhaps came to Japan over the Silk Road. It's an exotic pattern, and the oldest one. It says the third year of the Kansei era. That's about 1791 during the Edo period. I can't imagine how many times this block has been used. But it's not too worn, still in good condition. It's been through several eras of history and has survived wars and so on, and we continue to use it today. I couldn't be more grateful. The wood blocks are 30 centimeters high and 45 centimeters wide. They're made of magnolia, a wood that's soft and easy to carve. Traditionally, the head of the katakami workshop draws the designs. Wood carvers then shape the blocks by hand. Some wood blocks crack or part of a pattern gets chipped, but generations of Karacho's artisans have had them repaired and passed them down. During the Edo period, Japan had a strict class hierarchy, so katakami designs were divided into five types, according to the social status of the users. In central Kyoto is the oldest surviving home of the aristocracy. The stately Reisei family mansion is 400 years old. Beautifully patterned katakami adorn the sliding doors in the main hall. The large peony arabesque design is lively, but also elegant. The pattern brings together big peony flowers and subdued colors. A traditional symbol of happiness in Japan is the crane. Designs featuring cranes were allowed only in aristocratic residences. Here, soaring cranes create a spirited mood. This graceful pattern decorates the home of a noble family.
In contrast, samurai warriors preferred dynamic designs with patterns that are more crisp and masculine. The pine tree, an evergreen that lives for a long time, symbolizes power. People who enjoyed the tea ceremony appreciated wabi-sabi, the Japanese aesthetic that emphasizes qualities such as simplicity and modesty. They opted for more delicate patterns that suited the quiet space. The purity of the silently falling snow brings calm and peace to the tea room. Many homes built by rich merchants in the Edo period still stand in Kyoto. The residence of the Sugimoto family is more than 270 years old. It features karakami with a design of small flowers. This pattern was created using only kira or mica on a white background. Merchants had a low standing in the class hierarchy. Luxuries were strictly regulated. They were not supposed to use patterns and other displays of wealth. At first glance, these doors look plain. But when the light is just right, a design of small polonias emerges. Merchants came up with clever ways to enjoy their wealth in privacy. The Yogen-in Temple in Kyoto is closely linked to the second shogun of the Edo period. The sliding doors in the main hall have pine trees by a noted painter of the time, Tawaraya Sotatsu. And the backs of the doors are covered in karakami. The design is made up of dragon medallions. In Japan, the dragon represents the god of water, and people say the dragon soars back to heaven. These doors were restored by Kenkichi in 2010. Four hundred years ago, an innovative artist emerged in Japan. He would develop close ties with katakami artisans. Honami Koetsu displayed talent in a number of art forms, including calligraphy, painting, and crafts. He wanted to revive the elegant beauty and culture of the Heian period. In 1615, he opened an artist's community in northern Kyoto. Koetsu established a style of decorative art that has come to be known as the Rinpa School. One of the masterpieces of this style is a screen showing the gods of wind and thunder. It combines abundant gold leaf and delicate colors in a bold composition, creating a work of unique Japanese beauty. Koetsu brought many katakami artisans to the community. One of them was Karakami Yachoemon. Koetsu was a talented calligrapher and created hanging scrolls using katakami. Here's a short poem from the Heian period he transcribed. It says, Snow is gone from parts of the garden, but there are no other marks there. No one has visited. But spring has come. 
Koetsu added colors to the world of poetry. This work he designed features wisteria flowers and fern leaves made with katakami wood blocks. He also started making sagabon, or saga books. They were named after the area in Kyoto where they were published and were made of katakami with designs printed using kira or mica. People enjoyed them not only for what they said, but also for their designs. It's been 400 years since Koetsu established the Rinpa school. Kenkichi wants to recreate Sagabon books to commemorate the anniversary. The Hosomi Museum in Kyoto has some precious Sagabon. The paper was first painted pink, and the patterns were printed with kira. The front and back covers look like this. Kira, or mica, shines against soft colors. The covers of these books have more mica than Kenkichi normally applies to his katakami. There was no electricity in the Edo period. The kira must have sparkled brightly in the dim light of a candle, bringing out the luster of the patterns. The superb pairing of color and light gives depth to the designs. This pink is lovely, and the blue is clear and pretty. They're like what we call pastel colors. I'd say they are Kyoto colors bright but soft, not loud. I think the word hanari would best describe these colors. I want to bring Sagabon back to life. Today, I took you up on your offer to show me the real books. Having seen them with my own eyes, I feel more motivated than ever. Thank you. The colors of the Sagabon books capture the colors of nature in Kyoto that change from moment to moment under the light of the sun. Kenkichi immerses himself in nature to look for hints about the colors he should use in his Sagabon. The background is sky blue, and against it are yellow and deep green. There's also the red of the maple leaves. They form a complex mixture. The colors of nature are amazing. The colors of Kyoto are also the colors of Karacho, and the colors of Karacho are the colors of Kyoto. They're all around us in our daily lives, and yet they're the colors we yearn for. I think nature really serves as our guide. Kenkichi's Karakami depict the transient beauty of changing light and colors. He used a deep vermilion for these maple leaves and branches. Depending on the angle of light, the golden kira sparkles, like an autumn sun shining through the leaves. The season is concealed within. Maple leaves float on a twinkling river. To Kenkichi, the leaves appear reluctant to bid farewell to autumn.
Cherry blossoms are the color of spring in Kyoto. The whitish blossoms tinged with pink charm the hearts of the Japanese people. This design depicts the blossoms in silhouette, but their vibrant beauty comes through. In a blue summer sky, large clouds float upward. Kira, or mica, is used in the base color to capture the bright summer day, and on it float majestic clouds. Bush clovers are a flower of autumn. It's also the season when silver grass sways in the wind by the riverside. Here, bush clover leaves are shown in green, while the silver grass shines in gold and silver. The late autumn light plays hide and seek amid the depths of green. A raging sea in winter. Blue lines, thick and thin, depict violent, surging waves. Gaze long enough, and you can almost hear the waves and see them move. Kenkichi has started making his Sagabon book. His first color choice is a pale green. It's the tender color of young spring grass. He'll include other colors to signify the four seasons. Kenkichi is now a veteran katakami artisan, but his path wasn't always easy. In the 1960s, Japan's economy was rapidly growing. This brought big changes to the way people lived. Traditional homes were replaced by Western houses and apartment complexes, demand for katakami plunged. It was around this time that Karacho became the last of the original katakami workshop. Kenkichi was working at a trading company. He had little interest in katakami, but the family business was struggling to make ends meet. So at the age of 28, he quit his job to help out. I was the only son, so I was supposed to carry on the family name. But I didn't find the work interesting. Even so, I was young and had a strong sense of responsibility as a man. Apparently, that feeling was stronger than my doubts. He was new to the job, and no orders were coming in. He felt apathetic. Then, a big opportunity came Kenkichi's way. It would change his approach to katakami making. In 1976, a major renovation began of the Katsura Imperial Villa. The villa is a national treasure. It was built in Kyoto in the 17th century as a vacation home for the emperor. It's a masterpiece of Japanese architectural beauty. The Japanese government launched the project, which took five and a half years. 
Karacho had supplied Karakami to the villa and was asked to join the restoration effort. The project gave Kenkichi a chance to closely observe his father at work on an important assignment. Kenkichi was still inexperienced, but he helped his father create 3,000 sheets of Karakami paper. The Polonia design dances and sparkles on the white ground of the sliding doors. The quiet, serene world of the Katsura Imperial Villa was Kenkichi's first true encounter with traditional Japanese beauty. He became entranced by the profound aesthetics of Karakami. When you see walls and so on covered in karakami, it's truly a view to behold. But it's not because they sparkle and glitter. It's a simple sense of beauty. I think that sense is still somewhere in our hearts. Karakami's simplicity is in some way its secret. Kenkichi wants to preserve the beauty of Karakami. He's now working to pass on the tradition. His eldest son, Seiji, is following in his footsteps. In 2014, Seiji took over as the head of the workshop. My father has handed the baton to me, but he's still running too. So we're trying to work alongside each other and go through a generational change at the same time. This past year has been an important juncture. In the beginning, there was a lot of pressure. Seiji must feel grateful for all the things previous generations of artisans have nurtured and accumulated over hundreds of years. He should always remember that what he's getting is not his, but something he's been entrusted with. Seiji works out of another studio. He began learning the trade from his father a quarter of a century ago, when he was 19. Now he is exploring new possibilities for Katakami. He's making large Katakami sheets to entirely cover the walls of one room. They're for a customer who's building a new house to replace one damaged by a flood. Seiji has certain reasons for the pattern he's chosen. I make suggestions such as, I think this type of karakami would be a good fit for that kind of room. I believe this dragon medallion has all kinds of meanings, such as protecting a residence like a god. The palette is quite stylish, and yet powerful too. I think it'll be a very nice room. Seiji has a Katakami showroom in his studio. He wants to demonstrate that Katakami can be used for ceilings as well as walls. This shows how Katakami can be used to accent a Western style room. This table has an embedded design of fern leaves, 
and the cupboard is also decorated with katakami. This curtain has a katakami design on it too, showing it can also be used on textiles. Until my father's generation, katakami artisans focused on paper. Customers would pick and choose the designs they liked and have the paper made into a finished product. But if we give suggestions directly to customers, telling them what we think would look good, I believe they will feel more satisfied about their choices. Seiji's projects aren't limited to private homes. His work also appears in a shop of a global coffee chain. This is one of the designs handed down at Caracho. It depicts rolling clouds soaring to the heavens. Seiji used the clouds to represent steam rising from coffee and placed them against a coffee-colored background. He wanted to express the taste and the aroma of the drink. A pattern created long ago has found its place in the modern world. Seiji is promoting other new ways to use katakami while working to protect the tradition. He's been carving new wood blocks to replace those that are worn out or cracked. There are no more artisans who carve the blocks. Seiji is worried about losing patterns that have been kept over centuries. It has taken him 10 years to recreate four wood blocks. This is one he carved himself. It depicts countless chrysanthemums. The flowers signify eternal life and are said to remove bad luck. This design has been popular among ordinary people since the Edo period. It has also been used for kimono. Some of our patterns have existed for more than a century, and some haven't changed for more than a thousand years. To me, that's the power of Karacho patterns. 50 or 100 years from now, the new wood blocks will also have aged nicely. That's also true for artisans like us, as we pass things down over generations. I hope that decades from now, when I'm as old as my father, I'll be able to carry on the skills and maturity that can only come with age. So you might say, wood blocks and artisans are the same. A large collection of katakami from the Edo period has been kept in London. The Great London Exposition of 1862 was the first event to showcase handicrafts from Japan, which had been closed off to the rest of the world. Designs from the little-known country drew many people's curiosity. The event triggered the so-called Japanism movement in Europe that would influence Western culture and fashion. The London department store, Liberty, incorporated Japanese designs into its products. Fabrics with small flowers like these, known as Liberty prints, became quite popular. Japanese design was very different from anything else that people had seen before because Japanese had been, Japan had been closed to Europe and the West. The style of it was, was so... It, people, people really loved it. More than 100 years later, these prints are still in demand. Today, the patterns of small flowers are more colourful. They're used for clothing and everyday items. 
Japanese designs have become woven into the fabric of European life. Kenkichi has made a trip to London. He has wanted to see Katakami from the Edo period with his own eyes for a long time. Ironically, in Japan, we only have Katakami from after the Edo period. But older examples can be found in London. That's incredible. Kenkichi has yet to see katakami made by his ancestors. He's heard katakami can be found at the Royal Botanic Gardens, Kew. They were built in the 18th century as a garden for the royal family. They're also registered as a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Examples of katakami have been kept at a research center for studying the relationship between plants and people's lives. Hey, mm. Thank you very much. I understand you have a collection of old katakami from the Edo period. And most of the karakami you have here uh, must be from the Edo period, I guess. Yes, yeah, so they were all collected in 1870 by Sir Harry Parks. Each sheet of karakami has been carefully stored. I'm certain this was made by Karacho. This piece features a deep color created by Karacho's seventh generation owner. The tone is very similar to the one Kenkichi has used in his own work. I think this is also from Karacho. These sheets of katakami have survived for about 150 years. Kenkichi found 38 with the same designs as some under his care. Mm. This is the dragon medallion used on the sliding doors at the Yoganin Temple in Kyoto. The pattern is printed with golden kira against a refined base of green. The color combination is similar to the one Kenkichi chose for the restored doors. He senses the colors his ancestors used are still alive inside him. I feel like I've discovered one of the reasons Karacho has continued for four centuries. Every single one of the colors I saw today, I've been using myself. They're all familiar to me. That's amazing when you think about it. This has been an eye-opening experience. It's made me think again about the things I do unconsciously. Karacho has lasted 400 years, and I'm the 11th generation owner. I couldn't be more proud. In late autumn in Kyoto. Kenkichi is working on the patterns for his Sagabon book. He's painted the base colors on sheets of washi paper. Green, pink, blue, ochre, and white. These colors all depict Kyoto's seasons. Patterns for Sagobon should be applied only with Kira.
to recreate the powerful luster of the saga bone from the Edo period, Kenkichi decides to mix two kinds of kira and add more coarse grains. When I saw the real saga bone, they had quite a sparkle. I want to make mine like that too. The more I stir, the better. That'll generate more luster. The coarse grains make the mix thicker. Kenkichi gently spreads the kira onto the screen. This is a pattern of bush clovers. It's said to have been one of master artisan Honnami Koetsu's favorites in the Edo period. Kenkichi uses kira in place of green for the leaves. He wants them to appear to swim in the light. The motif portrays the dignified strength of plum branches that stretch out straight after surviving a bitter winter. He presses on the design with paper and soft pink, as if to will the flowers to release their scent. A sagabone book is made with 12 sheets of katakami that are bound together. Kenkichi's ancestors mixed colors and gently rubbed paper on wood blocks to create their katakami, just as he does now. The 11th owner of Karacho has inherited a form of beauty developed over a millennium. He continues the tradition and will pass it on. There are things we must not change. That includes the form of the woodblocks and the aesthetic. We must also not change nature and work that's truthful to nature. We're not making karakami for ourselves. We're not artists. We must never make things for our own satisfaction. That's the essence of karacho, as I have come to understand it. One month later, Kenkichi's Karakami has been bound into a saga bone book. The kira sparkles and is just as lustrous as in the saga bone his ancestors made. Mm. Kenkichi will now wait until words are added to complete this 21st century Sagabon book.